More than a year ago, a man with terminal cancer asked me to share his final moments with you. He showed a tremendous amount of courage in sharing his story because he knew he'd be gone from the world before it ever aired. For the last two days, we've been sharing Mike Sloan's decision to choose medical assistance in dying. Tonight is the final chapter of his journey. Our final interview with Mike took place in January 2020 when he was enjoying a trip to Toronto. I don't think I've been so happy to wish anyone a happy new year other than you. Well, you didn't think you'd be sitting there. I didn't think there was a remote chance that I would make it to 2020. We first met in September 2019 to discuss how he was sharing his story of his impending death through thought-provoking posts on Twitter. Soon after, he asked if I document his decision to move forward with medical assistance in dying. Well, it may upset some people, but it may also enlighten some people. If Mike were to let his anaplastic thyroid cancer run its full course, he could die of asphyxiation. He knew the cancer was closing in around his throat, but he still hadn't set a firm date for his death. As our interview finished and Mike headed back to his home in London, Ontario, we all shook hands, hopeful we'd see each other again. Months earlier, Mike had shared his hopes for his final day. Gonna have some friends over. There'll be beer. I've mentioned finger foods. But you know, I don't want it to be a sad thing. Just a couple weeks after his trip, Mike woke up one morning and called his doctor. His condition was deteriorating quickly. He was ready and he wanted to move forward with his plans for a medically assisted death immediately. Many of his closest friends couldn't make it in time. And with a two hour drive, neither could I. The one friend was able to be by his side to comfort him. Okay, time. Yep. While we have chosen not to show the medication being administered that would lead to Mike's death, it was a peaceful process. He reached his hand out to me, and so I, I took his hand when, when it started. And then I put both hands over his hand. I just wanted him to, to know there was, that we were there. It's just so quiet. There's no suffering. You're holding his hand and you never felt him slip away. No. Last September, Mike's closest friend spread some of his ashes at his memorial tree in London with a tall can of Molson Dry, his beer of choice, placed close by. There you go, buddy. Be well. In his final months, as the effects of cancer could be heard with each word he spoke, Mike Sloan found his voice on social media, where thousands began following his journey on Twitter. Probably the most important thing I've learned since finding out I was dying was this. Feeling validated is what makes life worthwhile. Just being told you matter changes everything. I'm just very grateful that I've had this experience and that I've been able to see my life come to an end in such a magnificent and enriching way. Before he died, Mike Sloan raised money for Youth Opportunities Unlimited to build a home for teens who are too old to receive care from CAS. He raised $34,000. The project is now complete. I'm Adrian Gobriel for City News.